Ben here again, coming to you from Ben's Audio Cave. Today I'm more in the office area because I've got something to talk to you guys about that's a little bit more nerdy, so I'm going to have to do some screen sharing on the computer today. And what we're going to be talking about is how to effectively fit your tone arm with the correct uh, compliance cartridge for your setup. Now, this is something that just messes with most people's minds. So, I've got a couple of tools I generally use. It does require a little bit of research, but the idea is if you get your tone arm resonance in the correct range, it's really going to elevate your experience as far as playing music and being able to accurately reproduce records. I did a lot of it with trial and error before I gave into the math part of things. So, uh, I, I've, I've just rolled up my sleeves and got nerdy. It's real easy to find out this information. Some of it can be a little bit confusing. So, I want to kind of try to help shed some light on that. Maybe help you guys get the absolute best match for your uh, current term table. And it doesn't have to be expensive. Even the uh, less expensive term tables when properly set up will sound awesome. All right, so that's it, and let's jump right in and get started. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to jump right in here and talk about this. This is a very important topic about getting your sound to sound just right on your turntable. This is going to require some research. You're going to have to have the following variables. You're going to have to have the compliance of your cartridge or your 2B cartridge. Let's do this ahead of time. Uh, you're going to need to know if you're using an attachable head shell, what the mass of it is. You're going to need to know, and when I say compliance of your cartridge, let me back, back up on that really quickly. I'm saying at 10 hertz. If it's at 100 hertz, like most of the Japanese cartridges, I'll show you kind of how to calculate that uh, here in just a second. And then uh, you're going to need to know your tone arm's effective mass. Hopefully that can be pretty easy to find. I'll show you the vinyl engine where you can find a lot of those things. And then we're going to uh, need to know how much our cartridge weighs too. Most of these specs can be found depending on which cartridge you have. I will tell you, if you can't find these specs or are not published, you may want to choose a different cartridge manufacturer because you're just shooting fish in the barrel. So right now I'm at a vinyl engine here. And we see that there is, it's asking for our tone arm effective mass. Now this is going to be actually our head shell plus our tone arm and that's what's going to give it in my case because i'm using a technics uh, sl 1200 mark ii now let's look at some of the other resources if we look over here at resfrequency.com this is actually a decent resource but this uh this calculator yeah it's it can be a little bit confusing so this will give us some detail like there's one snag about it okay uh figures of c coming from japan are usually measured at 100 hertz so that should be multiplied by one and a half to two now sometimes i stay, try to say stay safe and do 175 i will tell you that uh in the case of like my ptg 33 from audio technica it was closer to the one five so it's uh, it's measured as a 10 hertz compliance at 100 i mean a uh, compliance of 10 at 100 hertz it is closer to 15 which is like a similar to an ortophon quintet um ortophon actually measures theirs at uh at 10 which is great um the other thing here is this is going to be a lot of our resource here is glenn uh carol audio there's really good uh explanation of you know why compliance what you're doing here and again the uh the equation for it um this is a calculator i'm going to use here webcap 2.0 and it was recommended from ortofon over here now ortofon we're going to look at some cartridges here i'm going to look at the uh, cartridges at audio technica over here as well and then soundsmith is also another great supplier of cartridges and this actually has kind of a, a cheat sheet here 
of each one of their cartridges. Now, let me tell you, some of these SoundSmith cartridges can get kind of pricey. So if you're on the, um, if you're trying to stay within a budget, um, generally the Carmen and the Otello is where your budget's going to end there. And I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just being serious. The, uh, the Otello is entry level at $399. The Carmen is like $799. After that, you're over 1000 So SoundSmith makes great cartridges. They're super great support, but you pay for it. Um, Ortofon has provided us with this uh, compliance tone arm mass, all this. It's the same equation. It's kind of a different graph on how you can get there. Um, so there's that. Now, so here's let's go ahead and do some math. So let's start with the equation and how it works, and then I'll show you the cheat sheet at Vinyl Engine. Okay. So here is, let me find Microsoft Word here. Here's the equation. To find resonant frequency, the resonant frequency in Hertz equals 1000 divided by all that, which is two times pi. In this case, if it's 314, it's going to be 628 uh, times the square root of the total mass of your setup. That's cart, head shell, tone arm effective mass times the compliance of your cartridge at 10 hertz. And you get this value. Now, it's okay. These are easy numbers to plug in. We'll go to the web calc here in a minute, and I'll show you how we do it, how we get all these. Let me show you a couple quick resources from Vinyl Engine, because this is going to help get you at least in the ballpark. Okay. So, let's go to Vinyl Engine. Satisfy our variables first. First thing that we see is the effective mass. And just so you know, you need to log in for this site, go make one. If you're doing anything fun with uh, turntables, get a login now. That's what you need. Trust me, you're going to use this over and over again. So this is my turntable here. It's the Technics SL1200. If you, we look down here at the specs, I don't have to download any manuals. It's going to show us since I had the Mark II, my effective mass is 12 grams. So I did a quick Google and I'm like, uh, well, how much does my head show weigh all this? I've got a scale. I could have measured it for you, but let's just take some words for it right here. This is easy to find. The uh, head shell is actually seven and a half grams and the tone arm effective mass is four and a half. So um if we're using a different head shell then we need to calculate that so let's go back or let's go here to ortofon now my prior setup here was an ortofon two in black so let's look at the product details here ah uh, here's the nerdy bits so if we look do, 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 do. Our cartridge weight is 7.2. Our com compliance dynamic lateral is 22, uh, is 22, and that is at 10 hertz. I will tell you that is exactly what, what that is. So now let's plug this in. So if I have a tone arm mass of 12, and see this fits out a handy dandy little chart, right? So let me get this video out of the way here. All right, we'll just leave it there. So this is the compliance on the left. This is the cartridge weight on the top. So let's look here. Let's say seven because that's close to seven. Two and twenty-two. Mm, it says we're in the green here because you want to be somewhere from eight to eleven. Okay. All right. So now on to the next one. Okay, so we looked here and we seen our cartridge mass of seven puts us right in the eight hertz bubble here. But notice this says eight hertz, eight hertz, eight hertz. There's got to be some rounding going on in the background, right? So let's go back to our handy dandy little formula here. And notice this is frequency equals a thousand 
over 2 times pi 6.28 times the square root of mass times compliance. Okay, and that's mass is the total effect of mass. So let's let's do some numbers here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put these out here. So our effective mass of our tone arm is 4.5 plus our head shell, assuming we're going to be mounting it on the OEM head shell, is 7.5 plus the effective mass of our uh, or plus the mass of our cartridge, which is 7.2, according to Ortofon's website that we just seen. Now, we're going to add all this up, doing it in my head. It's 19.2 grams. All right? 19.2 grams, compliance of 22. Okay. So now then, let's go here to our handy-dandy little WebCap 2.0. And I'll look here. This is... This is a big formula, right? So I'm just, I've already got it punched in here, as you can see. The great part about this web calc is it, it remembers your uh, history. So look here. This is what the equation looks like. Look familiar? We know that's right. So now let's put in 19.2 times our compliance 22. So here we've got 1,000. Divided by 6.28, that's 2 pi, 2 times pi, times the square root of our total mass times our compliance. And let's hit the enter button. Da, 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 da. There it is. There's our result. It's 7.747. Now, you want to be between 8 and 11, okay? Apparently, it's rounding up on this vinyl engine. This 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 uh, uh, cartridge resonance evaluator they have here. It's an approximation. This whole this whole thing is like everything else analog. It's it's not exactly a complete and total exact science. But if you look here, there's no seven point two. You know, it shows where in the green zone. Even if it was eight. But that must be seven and a half. It must be rounding up. That's why we've got all whole numbers over here. So now we know how to do it by hand if we want to and what it's doing. So let's go over here just to check our math. And let's look at this side. This is great. This is resfreak.com and it's the resonance calculator. So they've already done, and this has got some good articles and stuff that they've written. Um, let's look here and and watch this. So 19.2, our total mass, our cartridge compliance of 22. Compute. Aha. So we'll see how they agree. 7.744. 7 7.747. So they must have used a few more values for pi or something like that. But we're like stupid close. And I just closed it. Resonance calculus. All right, so you're like, you know what, though? Here's the thing. I've got this super nice Zupreme head shell because this is the one that I had. And I want to use this instead. This, now, this, you guys have seen this and they've seen my PTG33 uh, version 2 mounted on this. Uh, it's, it's the equivalent of a Gelco HS25. And this is, this is a 12 gram head shell. So what's that mean? Well, we go back here. What that means is all of a sudden our arm effective mass and our head shell have changed. So what does that even mean? Well, what that means is we're now going to have a completely, totally different thing. It's going to be 16.5 as our arm's effective mass. Uh, so let me just write, let me just put that down here. 16.5 G effective. And then when we add a 7.2 G cart on here, 
let's do the math real quick. We've got 20, 23.7 grams total mass. Now, real quickly, I'm going to tell you this. I think of this kind of like unsprung weight on a car or the suspension on a car. Compliance is really kind of almost a measure of the suspension and its stiffness or softness. Uh, if any of you people are car people, you think about it this way. If your suspension is too hard, your car is not compliant, doesn't move, it hurts, it uh, skits over bumps, it does, the suspension doesn't do its job. If your suspension is too soft, it's just stuffed and you rub and you don't have any travel on here. There's a sweet spot in between here. And that's kind of what we're doing here when we calculate this is calculating the sweet spot uh, of the cartridge's suspension. So let's go over here and see what the cal cartridge calculator over here does. So what happens if we put in a effective mass of 16 and a half? Because that's now what we're working with. 12 grams head shell, four and a half effective mass of our arm. Okay. All right. So let's look at our same Ortofon 2 in black. 22. Uh oh. Right here. And that's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, it says this is kind of like the danger zone. I will tell you right now, from experience, it doesn't open up and sound like it's supposed to. It stuffs the suspension of the uh, turntable. So let's, since we've already, I'm not going to bore you guys again with the calculator and going in here and doing this. So let's go here back to our resonance frequency evaluator, since we know it works correctly, and let's check it out. Whoa, 6.97, that's not even 7. So this head shell and this cart combination is not a good combination. So what would happen if we were to come over here and to use the 10 gram version of this? So it's the same head shell, it's just it's lighter weight, it's 10 grams. That's going to, that's going to shave 2 grams off of our mass. So let's go to the calculator again. We'll make it 21.7. Yes, yeah, still not ideal, 7.24. Uh, our other option that we have is to use this head shell if we want azimuth. Now this is the head shell off the SL1200 uh, GR. It's 8.5 grams. This is uh, Cab USA it is a great place for everything Technics. Uh, Kevin is an awesome guy to work with. You should call him. He you know he's forgotten more about Technics tables than I will probably ever know. Okay, so it's got an asthma. See the little screw there? It means we can adjust it left to right. We'll do that in a different video. Okay, eight and a half grams. So let's go here and let's figure out what what we're working with. So 4.5 plus 8.5 is 13. It's our effective mass. Not much difference. I'm one gram heavier than our original 12 plus uh, 7.2 for the cart. So that's 20.2 is our total weight. Let's go here. Plug that in here. See how that works. Uh, it's seven and a half, uh, seven, seven point five five, seven and a half. We're getting closer to the magic number. If you go here, uh, to vinyl engine, it's going to kind of tell you something a little bit different than I would. It's going to say, Hey, look, seven grams. Yeah, you're in the danger zone, but you, you could probably get away with that, uh, because it's right at seven and a half. <laughs> does a lot better job but to me i don't think a uh, cartridge with that compliance is all that great on this uh on this technics table um you if you did something more like uh, in a little bit lower compliance range then you're probably going to be better off and that is the reason why i think that my audio technica ptg 33 cartridge actually sounded so much better here uh, than my two in black ever did. Uh, I will tell you right now, 
after it was on the Supreme Joko head shell, I put it on the stock Technex head shell. Even though I did lose some azimuth capability, I was still able to kind of tweak it in the collar a little bit to get it pretty close. Um, it absolutely sounded better, more lively. So same thing with like Hana and stuff like that. So let's let's go here and let's let's look at uh, this resource here again because I did want to show you guys something. So this is one of the things it was talking about. Most figures coming from okay. Uh, figures of C coming from Japan are usually measured at 100 hertz, so they should be multiplied by one and a half to two. Now, normally what I do is I plug in 1.75 uh, into the equation to do this. I will tell you right now on my Audio Technica, it is closer with what I've measured with a test record. We can do that later. Um, to having a resonance frequency uh, that's the compliance on the multiplier is closer to 1.5. So let's, let's go here and let's, let's look at that here. Da, 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 da. There it is. So world-class cartridges. What is a cartridge? Well, we know what a cartridge is. We don't care. So let's go here to my series. Then I've got uh, 1833. And there we are. There it is. So let's go view product. Okay. You guys have seen this card in a few videos. You know that's what I use. Let's go to specifications. This is where you're going to find uh, things about your card. So look, this is all they're showing us. No, we don't we need to know more than that. Okay, so we're not paying attention to this for now, but dynamic compliance. Look at this. As promised, 100 hertz. So I take 10 and I multiply it by one and a half, and I get to about 15. Uh, let's look down here. We also notice this cart's actually, even though it looks bigger, is actually a little bit less mass, 0.3 grams, but when we're in, into this level of things, it's less mass than. The two in black is so let's go over here and plug in some of our numbers real quick let me find my word document so i'm going to again use the the uh, 12 gram shell on here so four plus five plus 12 plus 6.9 and that allows us to arrive at 23.4 G. Okay. That is our total mass. Now, let's go over back to our handy dandy little calculator. Wrong one. Now, 23.4, 15. Oh, look, that's a much better number. Really, to me, Anywhere close to 9 to 10 is kind of ideal. Okay, they will tell you 10 is the most ideal because that's where it's all measured at. If you're in the ballpark on the mid 8s to uh, upper 9s, then you're doing okay. So let's go over here and look and see what Final Engine says about it. We're going back to our 16.5 grams of mass look at it here we've got a seven gram we'll call it seven it's six nine we'll call it seven and 15 well look we're right we're right there right in the middle pretty close now this is what i'll tell you this cartridge has been a much better compliance match but i'm still planning on getting a 10 gram shell uh, of that supreme versus that why let's do a submit and i'll show you because now if we look at seven and 15 we're right pretty much in the middle and i do believe it's going to be a much better fit for this turntable i mean it already sounds phenomenal better than the black i don't know if that's the cart or the compliance match or whatever but you know i mean it's to me it sounds better let's go over here and let's calculate the exact 
uh, frequency. So we know it's going to be minus two, so it's going to put us at 21.4. That is 6.9 plus 4.5 plus 10. So compliance, compute, ah, 8.8. 8. So, I mean, that's going to put us right in the sweet spot. Now, you guys have some things to choose from now. If we go here to Hi-Fi, and let's look at these Hi-Fi cartridges here. Let's go ahead and, if you're thinking about you can look up right now all of your turntable specs at Vinyl Engine over here. You can look up cart specs here too, or you can go to the manufacturer and look up cart specs. Um, Samico, all of uh, the major cartridge manufacturers for the most part will publish these. So let's go to here to view products to like the Hi-Fi cartridges. And like, let's look at a, and this is where we start to get really smart about this whole thing. So let's look at these OM5s here. And compliance, 20. Huh. That's probably going to be a little bit better match for this turntable. Let's look at the weight here of this cartridge. Find it, find it, find it. Well, that's it's over here. Cartridge weight, five grams, including extra weight. So this is a featherweight cartridge. So if we were to go over here and plug this in, and let's say we wanted the, uh, Let's say we wanted the 10 gram head shell. Okay, that's going to put us at 14.5, 19.5, 20 compliance. Oh, look, it's a pretty good fit. What if we did it with the standard Technics head shell and it's going to be 17 because the effective mass is 12 and the cart's 5? Oh, look at there. We're right at 8.6. This is an excellent fit uh, for that table. So these are the things now that you can use, and these are just tools, but hopefully with this calculators, now that you know how to use them and what they are, this is going to help. So what do you think? Is your mind just like completely blown? Well, mine used to be, but I really hope that this helps you guys kind of understand some stuff. I realize this video was long, but I mean, we're talking about math here. And honestly, when it comes down to analog reproduction, it's not quite as plug and play as we would like for it to be. Now, this is what I'll say. I'm going to drop the links to all these calculators and these resources into the comments. Um, ResFreak is a great calculator tool. Uh, Vinyl Engine will get you in the ballpark. Vinyl Engine will get you everything you need to know generally about your turntable and then you know you can google or look for your various cartridge uh, manufacturers things of such nature and you know kind of get the specs but when you're choosing a phono cartridge there are plenty of dimensions that we're looking at we're looking at stylus shape we're looking at uh, whether or not your uh, turntable has a vertical tracking angle adjust or bta uh, we're looking to see if you got if it's got azimuth adjust, you know, that helps us pick a stylus shape. But then the compliance is really one of the biggest things, and that's what helps the overall sound sound either open or whatever. If it's if we've got too high of a compliance cartridge on too uh, high of a mass uh, tone arm, then it's going to sound stuffed, and it's going to be like a car who's too heavy for the suspension it's on. If you've got too low of a compliance cartridge um, for uh, uh, too light of a tone arm, then your sound's going to sound kind of tubby and hollow and fat and ugly. So there's that. Uh, and then there's somewhere in the middle that's, you know, I like to use a story, uh, like a nursery rhyme analogy, it says it's kind of like baby bear's bed. It's like just perfect, just right. And 
that's you know where we kind of try to help you guys get now let's say trial and error is one thing i've tried so many different cartridges on my turn table wasted so much money if i would have done just some of this math ahead of time probably would have ended up being a lot better off now i know for some of you guys this is just too much you know like i just want to plug in my turntable and play it and that's fine and there's actually a lot of uh manufacturers out there that actually have good combinations that allow you to do that but if you're a little bit more advanced or you're looking for something just a little bit different and you want to play and try to you know just get the best sound possible you'd be surprised at how many variables you can eliminate and get some really good predictable sound and know how things are going to sound before you ever drop the needle that first time all right guys so if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions or concerns drop me a comment if you want to see anything else drop me a comment i'll do my best to answer every question and help you if you would like to see more content like this i would really like if you'd subscribe to my channel because that really helps me out and helps me know and until next time i'll see you guys from ben's audio cave